Yes, we already know the Honda Urban EV concept, but this one here now is the final production model. It's called Honda E and it is a small electric vehicle. Can it be a future classic? You always see the design, it is really iconic. But what about the details in the exterior and interior? You're an Autogefühl? As always, you know in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Everyone here on the Frankfurt Motor Show loves this vehicle. Why? Well, it looks a little bit like a Golf 1 and you cannot buy a Golf 1 anymore. And wouldn't you like to buy a Golf 1 electric? Well, this actually comes close to it. Just that Honda decided to go for this move. And I think it's a really bold move and it's a clever move. You can see here those round headlamps. They make the car very likable, you know, just friendly overall. And then a very clean and simple design with this one black panel. The illuminated Honda front logo from the concept did not make it into serious production because there are regulations issues in Europe to allow that. But other than that, you get also different friendly colors and the contrast in the lower part. And the car always sits quite low and you can always see in the front it's really not that wide. That makes it very practical for city use. LED lamps are standard by the way. Well, what's this black panel here on top of the hood? Interesting. This is the front camera. And next to it, there's a button right there, and then you press it, and ta-da, well, there we have the charging possibilities. When you park in front of a charging station or something, AC in the top, and of course, the lower one is the DC charger. And it's actually possible to charge up to 50 kilowatt hours, so pretty fast as for a DC charger, well, let's say fast enough for this small vehicle. Battery size is 35 kilowatt hours, and the range 220 kilometers or 140 miles. And, I mean, that will surely be enough. This one here, the CCS standard. And yes, those big wheels, they can sometimes charge like with 100 kilowatt or something, but when the battery is not that big, that's totally sufficient. Three meters 92, 12 foot 9 or 154 inches is the length of the Honda E. So yes, it's really short and the turning circle is just 9.2 meters. That's also extremely narrow, so pretty cool to get along in the city. And it also has a good wind efficiency, for example, with those camera mirrors, so no physical mirrors, and they all come as standard. Whereas at Audi, you pay like a couple of thousand extras for that feature. At Audi, I was not really keen on that feature with the Audi e-tron. Let's see how they have a solution for the interior monitors for that. Really looking forward to that. And also, those door handles here are integrated and they flip out. Let's see if they found a better solution than Porsche. And then again, this rather boxy shape here, also with a strong C-pillar right there. Also, the handles here for the rear doors are integrated. I'll soon open that to you. And 17-inch wheels we have on here, so kind of retro style. And of course, there are different colors available. Jonas has also shown you some of those in the beauty shots. I think this car is really iconic. What's your take? And the same also counts for the rear again with a rather simple design layout. And I think on the one hand, this car says, you know, like, cuddle with me, I'm friendly, I'm nice. But it still has enough of coolness effect that it doesn't look too friendly or maybe, you know, like childish or something. So I think everyone somehow can, you know, like this car. And I think that's also, I think this will be very successful price-wise, by the way. It starts about 34,000 euros, it would be a German reference price and a couple of thousand extra for if you go for a higher trim. Yeah, that's a little bit higher in the entry price than for example the Opel Corsa E or the VW ID3. It's also a relatively small car, however, they have more extra equipment already included. So then, you know, it depends on which exact price you compare. Overall, still an attractive offer in those new EV segment. So, under the hood, really interesting, that's more like classic ICE car. Hydraulic struts, yeah, way to go. And got a 150 horsepower electric motor in there. And about 8 seconds to 1 kilometers, or 6 to miles now. But, I mean, the acceleration inside the city will be even more significant, like to 0 to 60 kilometers or something like that. So, definitely fast enough. And, well, 
As I said, the battery is not too big, but this one is really meant to be driven inside the city. That's why it's also small and narrow and so on. And I think overall a good concept. It's really exciting with the interior. Those door handles here, you push them right here, and you open them like this. And um, you can also push them back just easily so they don't feel that awkward. So it's actually quite okay. Then frameless windows. That's also, you know, something emotional. Definitely pretty cool. This has a living room furniture style. We see nice high-class fabrics on the inside and this gray Scandinavian furniture style. So very well done that reduces the amount of black plastics at the inside of the doors and it's not you know that expensive to produce but it's a good interior build quality i just love that and very slim those doors um, but here of course not too much space for the bottles then first look here again this living room design i just love that it's amazing here wood is being used as a decor element compact steering wheel soon more to those screens 12.3 inch wide screens then six inch for the mirrors and you can see them right here <laughs> here we go so this is a different place to put the side mirror monitors than audi does soon more to that when we sit inside the car i'll explain it all to you seats they look very comfortable also wide seating area and again a beautiful gray fabric design also with sustainable materials that is fitting to a modern ev so very well done. Honda seems to make everything right with this vehicle so far. I'm really impressed. I mean, we have seen the concept, yes, but now to see it in the final production model, they kept pretty true to their word and they have really good solutions. Let's take a seat, right? And now let's get inside. By the way, if my voice is not as beautiful as usually, um, please excuse me, a little bit sore throat because of so much you know, talking and reporting all those days from the motor show <laughs> well but here getting inside is pretty easy the door opens fairly wide so easy to get in and out and you sit relatively low actually and it's you know it's a more open seating position the seats are very comfortable again living room style you can also pump them a little bit up and they're a little bit straighter that's good um, if we put them all the way down headroom wise that still fits with one meter 86 or six with one Although there is this glass roof inbuilt with a manual shade and a beautiful bright ceiling that brings more light in the interior. Just checking here if we can actually slide that open. But that seems to be Yeah, that seems to be a John says no. John says no, so we can just have some light in here and the shade and that's it. But I mean also think about cost savings and of course those glass roofs that you can open are also somewhat a weakness of a car, like a weak part, always. I mean, yeah, it's a nice, oh, there's someone left on the seat heating. I wasn't like, why is my, you know, why is my butt that hot? <laughs> so that was the reason for that. So here the steering wheel again, uh, very open shape, interesting, good quality materials for the volume, for example, right side for the cruise control and the whole quality that it resonates. I mean, it's not a super expensive premium vehicle. This is the best Honda ever, really. I mean, we've never seen such a build quality. Oh, now I know why, why that seating is on. So I, 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 I just touch it with my knee. So this is a design flaw, but I'll soon show it to you again when Jonas is sitting behind me. Again, steering wheel up and down, in and out. This build quality is nothing which we have ever seen of Honda. This is a massive step forward. I'm so super impressed. Again, this wood right there, this decor element. Good look at the instruments and you know what's happening around you, you know? Everything is upright, slim. You have, a, you have the best overview here. So um, I think this car has been, really been built, you know, from, from scratch. And I think like, what do we need as urban citizens nowadays? You know, what, what demands do we have for the car? And 
can say this is so far pretty perfect. Interior overview and again another wow factor. First of all everything is clean then this living room, wood atmosphere, matte wood, no fingerprints. I don't see any black piano lacquer other than the frames of the screens, so pretty cool. Then you have a volume knob right here and the home button for the screen that you can also access it, you know, um, while driving a little bit better. Vents right there, for example, for your hands or so. Then the climate unit even has clicking sound when turning. So high quality here too. And I like that we still can control it while driving pretty easily. And then this was the one design flaw. But you can also say, oh, I now activate the seat, uh, the, the seat heating always with my knee. <laughs> yeah, oh, I could do this all day. But then maybe in summer times and you drive the car and then maybe like have a um, left hand corner and then why is it so warm suddenly at 30 degrees Celsius outside? Yeah, um, but again, still nicely built. Then those two big wide screens and then there's the digital instruments and again you see all oh, those two side mirrors and this is a basic difference to the Audi e-tron. In the Audi e-tron, um, maybe Jonas moves on over to the left here for a second. Um, in the Audi e-tron the screens were like here and this was really bad. You had to look down and you had to look to the side and this was distracting majorly. Here your view is not like that distance distant away from the front which is also uh, heated available, by the way, the front windscreen. And also, if you look, where would you look when you have the classic mirrors? That's also somewhat this direction. So, I would really like to test that soon out when driving, but it seems to be that it's not such a different um, direction from the look. So, I think it's a clever way to um, integrate that monitor right there. Or also, when you look to the right side here, on the other side, you can easily watch that. So I think they really thought about where do people look when they use the classic mirrors. And that is the best solution. Look at that Audi. Maybe better do it in that way. So, and then we have this integrated panel right there. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit too much that it, we also have it here for the co-driver. Um, here, I think that would have been definitely sufficient. This one then is an all touchscreen, for example, also with the GPS here. Yeah, it looks a little bit like tech overload, but again, good responsiveness and the best GPS we've seen by Honda yet. There will also be the smartphone connection available, of course. Connect a new device right there, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, both via USB. You can browse through the main menu here a little bit. You can also put it to the right side. So um, maybe your co-driver wants to do something more. Uh, so, I mean, it's kept relatively simple as for the menu structure. Maybe it could have been a little bit more intuitive or something. So, um, and again, this dual screen is maybe a little bit overkill. Or what's your take on that? Then we have to, those digital instruments. Maybe I put the screen a little bit higher then Jonas can see it better. Then we have the digital speed there and some information what's going on and I think that's also totally sufficient. So overall a very nice idea for this cockpit here and you know we have this one panel and it doesn't distract the view too much to the front windscreen. Really amazed. First let's go up a little bit you know to the ceiling again because also the rear mirror is a camera. See here it does not change when I am um, you know change it like this manually. So there's also a camera to the rear. Um, then you can maybe stack up the, <laughs> there it is, other GoPro filming. You can you know, put your luggage in the rear all the way up to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. And I mean, if there's something or maybe like a fail safe going wrong, you do it like this and then you have a normal mirror like this. So there is still the possibility. Very, very interesting. And when you put it on again, the camera is activated. Big windscreens here, by the way, and also the quality here of those details is really good. We have a light right there, then you can also check your beauty at any time. <laughs> and then we go further down again, because first of all, in the front and lower part, this is where you charge your smartphones or add the connection. And they also thought, although there's no middle tunnel in the front, really open space, that's cool. You can put your smartphone right there then when you're charging it or have it connected. And what's also amazing is, you have here a real power plug. You can even charge your laptop, for example, while being here. And another 12 foot power supply, so really cool. I love that we have no middle tunnel in the front. And there's a cup holder you can pull out for, you know, 
Ah, oh, will this work with bottles? Yeah, that shouldn't be too high then, but still a good solution. And then we have the driving mode selector, P, and then you put in the drive mode and start driving and so on. Driving modes for normal or for the sport mode if you want a little bit more punch. And then further down below you have this split. Then you can put more bottles right there, for example, bigger ones, smaller ones, or also, you know, whatever you might want to transport, purse and, and, and so on. So overall, you know, they really thought about before designing this vehicle. That can't be said for all cars, but for this, definitely. Also for the rear seats, you have those integrated handles. And even that, it really resonates a good quality. Then we have the same styling here, almost 90 degree opening of the door to be easy getting inside. And then again, fabric soft cover on the rear doors inside. This is a better build quality than we see with some premium cars that are 100K or something. This is really amazing. Also isofix at the seats each. There are two seats available. Of course, that's totally fine. And remember, it's a narrow car where you can get along in the city very well. And also the nice gray fabric with the bench that goes all the way through. And I mean, it's not the longest car. I mean, 3 meters 92 is really short. But then again, the use, you know, the whole packaging is actually quite good. This is as I would be driving in the front seat. I mean, it's not the most comfortable seating position in the rear, but you can actually, for short drives, drive with four tall adults. That is exactly possible. Also, the head clearance. Just can put a hand over my head. So, really impressed here too. Oh, look at that interior lighting here with those four lights. It's also beautifully done. So, yeah, I mean, of course, they are bigger cars, but um, considering this is so super short, it is reasonable space we have here on the rear. So actually pretty cool. There's no middle tunnel since it's an electric building platform. So we can also crouch through and it's pretty cozy with this bench that goes all the way through. So if you maybe um, put those seats more, a little bit more forward and then get in the rear of the car and use a little bit of us for snuggling or something, this could also be a pretty cool idea for an urban EV day. Or Honda E, as they call it now. Then in the lower part, we also have two USB chargers with a classic USB device. I mean, everything here is simple and clean and also with high class fabrics. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. I can already tell you right now, this one will sell like hot vegan cakes. Taking a look at the trunk. Everything feels very light and easy. Yeah, you're a little bit limited here in width and overall the trunk is very limited. Got some spots for your charging equipment here. This is the normal um, household plug because most of the time when you have a supply at home, the normal household plug will be just fine. You don't need the fast charging and so on. So yes, the trunk is where this car is indeed very limited. However, you can also reach over right here quite easily because it's so short and then flipped the seat bench from here. There's a bag lying on the back on the bench at the moment, so we kind of flip it completely. But here there's top tethers for the child seats available. But then you know it's easy to flip it from here. So I think it's an, um, maybe Jones can come over with the camera here um, over this top cover. So I think it's an interesting solution that they put it right here, this flip, because that makes it really easy to flip the whole bench already from here. And now to the conclusion to the Honda E one of the most interesting vehicles from this motor show. Iconic exterior design. It's small, it's narrow, it's enough size-wise for the city and it's a good package. You still have enough space on the interior and a very thought out concept. Great interior quality materials, the best we've seen from Honda ever. It's really something completely new. They thought that one through from scratch. A very modern interior also with those screens. Maybe a little bit screen overkill, so I maybe could have reduced that a little bit just. But other than that, very clever interior concept and this will also drive very sporty because with a low center of gravity, 50-50 weight distribution. Yeah, the car is of course heavy as all electric vehicles because of the battery, but still it will surely drive very agile. Looking forward to the drive very soon. Also, the range is enough for the city. It's nothing for, you know, long range commuting or, you know, like, you know, when you drive like 50,000 kilometers a year or something. But for all other purposes, this one is really what modern car customers need together with an iconic design. And I really think that this one will be one of the future EV bestsellers in this small segment. Or well, what's your take? Please leave me your comments and let's discuss here the Honda E.